And welcome to Hannity. Tonight, a big budget battle taking place on Capitol Hill. Speaker Kevin McCarthy and President Joe Biden have reached a tentative deal on the debt ceiling. Not all Republicans, not all Democrats are on board. In fact, many are very outraged about the agreement. Now, coming up, we have former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich. He supports the deal. And Congressman Dan Bishop, North Carolina, who does not. They will join us and debate the purported compromise. But here's what you need to know about the 99 page so-called Fiscal Responsibility Act, including arguments on both sides. Now, first, the name, just so you know, it means nothing. We already have over $31 trillion in debt, and that massive tally continues to grow even after this bill. Still, small government economists, people like Steve Moore, support the bill, calling it a step in the right direction. Republican Congressman, on the other hand, Chip Roy, is referring to it as a turd sandwich. The Washington Times, meanwhile, they describe it as a win for the GOP, all while Representative Nancy Mace is trashing the deal for normalizing record spending with the president who can't find his pants. Now, some Republican lawmakers, they are infuriated that the compromise maintains what is an unacceptably high level of COVID-era spending and, you know, repurposes nearly $100 billion in spending instead of making outright cuts to the budget. This is a bill that pushes any further negotiations back until after the presidential election, which is a very key point of contention. Many Republicans wanted yet another negotiation before next year's presidential election. They fear handing Democrats a blank check if they keep the White House in 2024. Here's what some Republicans like about the bill. One, it caps non-defense spending growth by no more than 1% in 2024 and 2025. Two, the bill does claw back $28 billion in unspent COVID funds. Three, it officially cancels Biden's student loan pause. Repayments now restart at the end of the summer, but it doesn't end them. Four, it marginally expands work requirements for certain social programs like food stamps. Five, funding to Biden's insane $80 billion plan to double the size of the IRS. That will be cut by $1.4 billion a year, but a far cry from the Republican bill that slashed the program completely. And according to CNN, another $20 billion will be repurposed in 2024 and 2025. Quote, this provision does not appear in the text of the bill, but another source from familiar with the deal, said both sides have agreed to that. But that means best case scenario is Biden's IRS expansion will still have around $60 billion to work with. As conservatives point out, the budget cuts are small, not enough for some Republicans. Remember, their bill cut $4.8 trillion. Also, the work requirements feature a lot of exceptions, and some believe that the cuts are essentially window dressing to a terrible bill. Now, other Republicans are for it. The Republicans passed the original bill, again, that saved $4.8 trillion over 10 years. According to Kevin McCarthy, this bill saves just over uh, $2 trillion, which is a record spending cut. Now, finally, the bill also cuts some red tape around certain energy projects and expedites a pipeline in West Virginia. That's good for the energy sector in this country. Now, of course, Democrats, they are also livid about the provisions. You have the far-left Sierra Club calling it a bad deal for the country. You have Senator Tim Kaine attempting to now torpedo the legislation in the U.S. Senate. You have Congresswoman Cori Bush now accusing her fellow lawmakers of, quote, taking food out of vulnerable people's mouths. Needless to say, Democrats, they're not happy with this bill like some Republicans aren't. Take a look. We're being held hostage because I am one of the people that has read all 100 pages of this bill. And I have been asking questions for three days. And there are things in this bill that I would clearly not support. Will you vote in favor? I'm still undecided because I know we can't default. I'm angry that we're in this position. So I have some serious concerns about the deal, Wolf, and my team and I are still reviewing it. We just received a text last night. But one of the major concerns is on non-defense discretionary spending. Another major problem is the Joe Manchin pipeline that we fought so hard to stop from being built. That is still a part of this bill. 
Now, no doubt many on both sides of the aisle are either happy or unhappy about the, quote, compromise. Even though the bill is online for all to see and has advanced through committee, it is still subject to change with amendments, and that complicates the agreement even more. And we have the so-called hard deadline, which is not a hard deadline, which Janet Yellen says is June the 5th. We do know, do know one thing for sure. A primary holder of our debt is the Communist Party of China, uh, and they do not fear, they do not respect this current president, this administration, because this week they spit in our faces yet once again and refused what was a polite invitation for our country's top defense officials to meet in Singapore. They said no go. And this also comes as China's neighbor, North Korea, well, they just launched a space vehicle in preparation for the country's very first spy satellite, which reportedly ended in failure. We can only hope. It is now more clear than ever. Under Biden, we are a train wreck both at home and abroad. China has declared a cold war against our country, and we are doing nothing to stop it. 